I'm Holly. And I'm Bridget. And this is Girls Next Level. (laughs) Welcome back to Girls Next Level, everybody. You are almost ready to leave for your vacation, right? I can't wait. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for you. You have to post like crazy so we can all live vicariously. I say I'm going to, but then it's another, it's a whole other issue when I get there that I'm like, oh, I don't know. I want to see everything. (laughs) At least post the food. Okay, yeah. (laughs) So we have, we are finishing up the Hef's birthday extravaganza. It was a one hour special on E. We're finally wrapping up the second half hour. 80 is the new 40. And when I was watching this episode, it made me think about boundaries a little bit. Yeah. I think a lot of people will be able to relate to this, especially if you're a woman. Sometimes holding your own boundaries is hard. I feel like if you establish any kind of boundaries in your personal life at all, or even at work or whatever, you run the risk of being called a bitch. Yes. I feel like I feel like in the mansion that was definitely a thing. I feel like it's where I got a lot of a bad rap from the mean girls. And ironically, I wasn't even like really holding boundaries then. But like if I wanted even like a minute of like privacy or like my own time or anything like that. It was like, oh, she's a f- her. And all of a sudden that made me evil. And I'm like, what clown show am I living in right now? Did you ever feel at the mansion that there were times when you just had a really hard time with boundaries? Like, how did you feel having room three? Because in the beginning, it was kind of a shared room. It was definitely a shared room. And even when it wasn't a shared room anymore, it was definitely the central hub where mm-hmm. everybody came and went and felt they were able to do so freely. Yeah. And for the most part, I really liked that. Mm-hmm. I liked that aspect of it. I liked having Stacy in there and Crystal and my sister and you coming to visit and like people just coming in and out and having all the makeup and hair going on in there. But sometimes you do need that alone time. Yeah. You do need some space and some quiet mm-hmm. or rest or you're sick or something. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes you need it. And I felt like everybody was respectful of that for me though yeah. in that situation. But there are other spots at the mansion where I feel like boundaries were definitely not respected. Yeah, for sure. Or we were not allowed to have them. Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. And just certain things that come up in this episode made me think about boundaries. I'm sure we're going to get to them. Yeah, we'll get there for sure. (laughs) So last week, um, when we watched the first half of this second half hour, I had forgotten to watch it with commentary on. So I went back and I watched the commentary and I'm kind of bummed I missed it because I, I don't know. I just feel like it's kind of telling. Definitely. Regarding like where our dynamic as a group was. Because I've said before on this podcast that in season two, you start to see a little bit of tension, a little bit of like, I don't know if it was like fighting for the spotlight or what it was, but you hear it in the commentary, like people going out of their way to just talk over each other and like mm-hmm. shut each other out. Not all the time. Like I think there's plenty of time during the commentary where we're all three like joking with each other and having fun. But then there's these weird moments that don't even make sense. And I'm like, what's going on? Right. <laughs> yeah. And that's another boundary related thing too is – I felt like when there were battles for attention going on with certain people, it was hard because even if you don't want to be the center of attention all the time and you're willing to share, you still want a little bit of your own space, especially living at the mansion because there were no second or third spaces for us when we lived at the mansion. Like most people have home and then work and then where they go with their friends, you know, there's like a and second, third space. Their family, like mm-hmm. a different, yeah, yeah. But when you're at the mansion, your work, your personal life, your friend life, your family life, it was all there. So everybody wants a moment of their own. So when you constantly have another person trying to like steamroll you and scream over you and shut you up, it gets frustrating. Mm-hmm. And then you can't say anything about it or you're in trouble. So you and just you're have the to- and be pissed right (laughs) so so that was weird like how do you hold your own boundaries when it comes to just wanting your own space or to be able to say what you want to say or having your own little moment here and there I was just gonna say doing what you want to do without Mm -hmm. somebody else being jealous or thinking they're not getting that opportunity or thinking you're getting too much and they're not getting enough yeah it's really hard Mm -hmm. for sure so last week we left off with 
Kendra's mom is coming to the party. Yeah, so then the next scene, the first scene in the second half is Hef walking down the spiral stairs to go down to the gym because painted ladies are down there. So got to go check that out. And you say, Hef has been editor for over 50 years. So when the parties roll around, he's got to peek at everything and make sure everything is right. He's a perfectionist and a stickler for detail as he goes down to visit the, and you're saying that as Mm -hmm. he goes down to visit the painted ladies. And he like, checks on everything and says yeah very good and heads back upstairs (laughs) yeah that's for sure he's definitely a perfectionist but I do feel like all these scenes of him like inspecting the party and going down to look at the painted ladies it's very much like him wanting to participate in the show finally the show wanting to give him something to do like I think that was more on autopilot maybe not going down and ogling the painted ladies but for the most part like checking on the party and like actually walking out there that was for the show I think ogling the painted ladies is something he did before every party yeah (laughs) because I think that even though like I feel like he was very happy with where we were right now and wasn't looking to add new people he's got to just see you never know for sure yeah then the next scene we're back in my room Stacy looks so cute. Like, I love her in that orange. Yeah. I'd forgotten about that look on her, but I think she looks so pretty. And we're, Stacy and I are helping each other into our corset, and there's a knock at the door, and Holly walks in <laughs> topless. Yeah. Ta-da! I'm ready to get into my peacock outfit, which I need help with, which luckily you helped me get into the corset. I love that peacock outfit. It was something I designed and Trashy Lingerie made. I got the idea because Trashy made this flamingo costume that I thought was really cute, and I thought, I want to do the peacock version because I love peacocks. So I started collecting all these peacock feathers that had been shed in the backyard. I think I did have to go get some extra feathers though. And I went to this place in LA called Mother Pluckers. I've been to Mother Pluckers. That sells (laughs) feathers. So I had the peacock outfit. And I talk in commentary about wanting to eventually do a white peacock outfit, which I didn't get around to doing, but that would have been cute. It would have been really pretty. And Courtney looks hot. Courtney looks really hot. Courtney's in the room. Courtney Culkin, a playmate. She looks hot in her leopard print outfit. And you say um, it was a peacock themed weekend. You gave Hef peacocks for his birthday. And you talk about you were collecting those peacock feathers for three years. I was. That's crazy. Yeah. And I help you in with your corset. And they make you look all uncomfortable. They like to do this every time we're trying to get in the Mm -hmm. bunny costumes or the corsets to make it look like it's so painful and so uncomfortable. But honestly, you guys, corsets are tight and they do suck you in in all the right places. But I feel like they're fairly comfortable. Yeah, especially like the trashy lingerie ones. Like it's not uncomfortable. It's just like I need help getting in it because my arms aren't five million. Well, it's impossible to get in a corset (laughs) on your own. But I feel like they... I love the way they feel. I feel so supported and feel good. And obviously, it's still a relief when you take it off because Mm -hmm. they are tight and molded to your body. But I sort of love both of those feelings. I love feeling all like sucked in and like Mm -hmm. pulled in. And then I also love that release at the end of the night. Well, I feel like for me, I was always so self-conscious of my stomach that when I have a corset on, I don't have to worry about sucking in all the time. Right. Right. So that reminds me though. Um, so when I went home last time, I found the Barachi dress that I had custom made uh-huh. for my um, Bridget Sexiest Beaches premiere. I like that one because it has shells on it. Yeah, <laughs> we, we put the shells on uh-huh. it and everything. And I brought it home and I, th- I would been looking for like the perfect birthday dress to take to Greece and I haven't been able to find one. Mm-hmm. And ones that, like you sent me one that was amazing, but it's uh-huh. not out yet. Oh. I know, it no. sucks. So I'm having trouble finding like the perfect, like, Ah, oh, moment birthday dress. Mm-hmm. But I love this dress and I've always wanted a second chance to wear it. And I thought, I wonder if it still fits me. I had Nick help me because again, I couldn't try yeah. it on until he was home from work and could help me get into it. And it fits me perfectly. So I'm taking it to Greece with me and I'm super excited. Oh, good. Yeah, that's perfect for Greece. Gizmo did not approve of you taking off your clothes, I have to say. She ran from the room. She doesn't approve of her mom getting naked. (laughs) That got the veto. And then Courtney says, just when you think you're creative, Bridget and Holly come along and fuck it up. And then the camera. She's so sweet. The camera pans over to Kendra because again, we're playing into this this whole idea that her present isn't good enough, which never was a thing in the moment. Mm -hmm. It was played up by the cameras. I feel like it's so funny because since these two episodes were an hour long special, I feel like we've been talking about the present drama for weeks. Like you guys listening are probably like, Jesus Christ, she hasn't given him the 
photo yet? <laughs> <laughs> totally. Because I feel like that. When I is know. She, when is he going to get this photo? <laughs> and she's freaking out because she doesn't know how to wrap it. She doesn't have a frame. She's like, does anybody have a frame? Like, who the f- a frame just sitting around like a big one (laughs) right and I'm talking in commentary about how I'm always going to Aaron Brothers getting stuff framed and Aaron Brothers went out of business right I used to go there often like all the time to get framed like now what do you do Michael's yeah so I say it's weird getting dressed knowing that you're just gonna take it all off and yeah Kendra's talking about she doesn't know how to wrap the gift and she's asking her mom how she should wrap it in commentary Kendra says she didn't have time to get a frame and then she says no actually I just didn't want to spend the money on it I'd already spent enough money and it's so it sort of just kind of goes back to the thoughtfulness of everything Mm -hmm. and she says that later on in the episode she says that she spent what was it 500 bucks Does that seem steep to you? Because it doesn't seem steep to me now in today's money, but I feel like back then and for what you're getting, that seems steep. And I know I used to order like Photoshopped things from Mark Frazier all the time, but I don't remember it being $500 a pop. I used to order stuff from him too. Like I know I did the Bride of Frankenstein with him. I know Mm -hmm. I did the King Kong with him. We did a lot of group things with him. And I don't remember it being $500 either, but... Do you think she got overcharged? Well, I feel like if anything, Mark would have favored Kendra. I mean, he he found her, right? He True, but I did hear this one thing from Kendra a long time ago. She said he was pissed because he assumed that when Hef took an interest in her, that it was for Playmate and that he would get a finder's fee for finding her. Because if somebody found a Playmate, like referred somebody to Playboy and they became a Playmate, they could get like a $1,000 finder fee. And according to Kendra, she said that Mark was like pissed because he thought she was going to be a Playmate. And when she just became a girlfriend he was pissed because he didn't get the finder's fee I don't know if that's true but that's what I heard you think he'd hold that big of a grudge over a thousand dollar finder's fee I don't know yeah that seems weird but I don't know Uh, and then I talk in commentary too about how I did a photo shoot with the cake that I'm about to jump out with and I did it step by step like every step of the oh yeah I found those recently you used them in a girls next door calendar right I used one of them in the girls but I said what I was gonna do for them was frame them and give them to Hef as a Christmas present oh yeah some of them so I don't know you could have made a flip book oh, I could Remember do flip books? I still could <laughs> I have all of them I love flip books they're so funny I used to have this one when I was a kid from the Disney store and you flip it and it's Cinderella's dress going from like rags to the dress Ooh, I like that one <laughs> I haven't seen a flip book in a milli you know what there used to be like a party favor that I went to where you step in like a photo booth type thing and mm-hmm. it makes it and you do like a whole like little thing and then it makes a flip book out of it oh that's cool Yeah, it was a Perez Hilton party, I think, Mm. had that little thing there. So then the next scene is Patty's in Kendra's room looking for wrapping paper. And they're looking through Kendra's underwear to wrap the present. Is that weird to you? I don't want to be like super judgy over it. Because here's the thing, like Kendra's with this old dude. It is what it is. Probably not changing anytime soon. So if Patty wants to have a sense of humor about it, fine. But also part of me is like, ooh, you're digging through your daughter's drawer to find like the tiniest G-string to wrap it around a present she's giving to her 80-year-old sugar daddy. But the besides me being judgy or not judgy or whatever I think about it, what I thought of was that's presented on this show. Like it's just this cute little family prank but like you can't rehearse your strip tease in front of your stepdad who's fully closing his eyes at the end, by the way, if any of you watch the footage carefully. But that's portrayed as like so gross and scandalous and what the fuck is she doing? But like Patty can like dig out the G-string and put it around a present for Hef and like that's just cute and family and funny. Yeah. It's a choice. It's an editing choice. That's it just is. all I want to say. No, you're totally <laughs> right. They're looking through Kendra's underwear drawer to wrap the present and they find Patty's outfit. Surprise. I know. And like I said before, I feel like it's one of those things where there's a field producer off camera pointing and whispering, being like, Patty, look in that drawer. Because it's just too good to be true. Yeah, I think <laughs> so too. Like that whole thing I think was set up from the jump. I think so too. I'm like, my notes say, I'm not buying it. Yeah. <laughs> And in commentary, you talk about how much you like your and Hef's bathroom. 
Yeah, it reminds me of the bathroom of like the Grauman Chinese theater because they have like the yellow walls with like the butterflies painted on it and stuff. And what I thought was interesting, and you start talking about when you build the theater there at the mansion, yeah, ha- was, that's going to have that element in it. Yeah, I always thought Hef should build like a proper home theater since that was such a huge part of his life because the way it was set up is they had this screen in the living room and it was all like really uncomfortable folding chairs behind the couches. And I just thought how odd that he doesn't invest in like a really nice home theater since that screenings are such a huge part of his life. And you'd think if he built something really state of the art, he could even do like industry screenings and things like that. And I had talked to Mary about it and she said, oh, we were thinking about that at one point. We were going to like put it underground, like maybe under the game house or something. Yeah, that that, would have been cool. That would be cool. And you even had a name for it. You said they'll call it Mayfair. Yeah, because that was his like childhood theater he went to. Yeah, yeah. So we are finally walking downstairs for this big party. And do they add fake applause? Probably. I feel like they are known for that. (laughs) Yeah. Like I think there were probably like close friends of Hefs who were there at the party early. And when we walked down, they'd probably like clap and like be supportive and cute. But I don't think it was that much applause. (laughs) You know what else I noticed too, just seeing some of the people in the shot is like it reminded me of a store a scandal story it's not one i'm gonna share because it's about somebody who's like not in the public eye at all oh i know what you're talking about it took me a second and it even there's layers to the scandal story and it even involves somebody who was like underage and i don't want to out them right that's their business but i was going on to apple Podcasts to make sure that our season two cover art switched over because there was a little bit of a delay with that And I saw some of our reviews, most of which were really nice, which we appreciate and love. But then I saw this one like chaotic, really long negative review. And one of the things the person said in it was, this is all surface. You're not telling us what really goes on at the mansion. Both. Did you listen to our prequel episodes? Like we are spilling all the dirt unless it's something that is just none of our business like if it's something about somebody who's not a public figure nothing about their story's been out before like we're sharing everything if it affects or touches our experience in any way right but we're not outing people that don't need to be outed you know what I mean like if they want to share that story that's their business right we have some dignity people (laughs) (laughs) um so yeah we're all walking down for the party in the interview i say it's finally time for the party we all walk downstairs and we pose for photos at the bottom of the stairs like we always Mm -hmm. do patty and um, kendra's friends come walking down and kendra says when she saw her mom she was like wow okay actually that's not bad (laughs) which yeah i I thought thought yeah it was the perfect right amount of sexy i think And it cuts to a montage of the party and showing all the celebs that were there. And you're with Steve Valentine. What show was he from? He was on ER, right? Um, It was a doctor Or CSI or one of those. One of those, One of those big shows. He was like a doctor. But we knew him because he was also a magician on the side. Well, I don't know. He was your friend. I don't know what you knew him from, but he would take us to the Magic Castle and stuff. Amazing. Yeah, he's a magician. Yeah. You would never know that he was a magician. Um, But yeah, they showed Owen Wilson, Bill Maher, of course, Donald Trump. They show Bill Maher every single time. Every time. Uh, I wonder if Bill Maher's IMDb page is filled up with like... Girls, girls next, next door, door girls next door girls, girls next door <laughs> Ivanka Trump Paris Hilton Steve Valentine Fair Fawcett oh yeah I forgot she was there we have a picture with her too and I put it in our um, Patreon yeah and I think she's like not looking at the camera and it looks like she's dogging us I don't think she was but I don't think she was I think she just wasn't ready yeah. for that picture <laughs> um, Reggie Miller John Elway like all kinds of people I'm sure there was a million more that I just didn't catch you know what I hate about this party scene is it cuts to me in interview and I'm saying that I don't really have any responsibilities that have part, which is like gag me with a spoon. Like, I mean, some of the things I'm saying in this are true, but some of them aren't. That's the first big lie. I don't have any responsibilities. What the I'm required to sit there at his side the whole time. I'm required to walk down the stairs at a particular time, take a certain amount of pictures, follow him to the table, sit next to him the entire night unless I have to leave for two minutes to take a pee. I can get up and dance in front of the table a little bit if he gets up and dances and if some of the other girls get up and dance, but I can't really leave him alone. And I have to like greet everybody that comes up and poses for pictures. And it just makes me so mad when I watch myself in these interviews because it's like... 
I have to go to bat for him and like make everything seem so normal, which makes sense because like when I'm in a relationship, I'm the most ride or die. Not so much after we break up, but in the moment, I'm very ride or die and I'm just trying to make it sound like I'm doing what I'm doing there because it's exactly what I want to be doing. And then I say things like, I like spending time with Hef, which is true, I did. And then I say, I'm just kind of there doing my thing. And it shows me dancing, but like dancing on my chair, basically. Like I can't leave that chair area. And it's like, I'm not doing my thing in any way, shape or form. And I just want to go back in time and like shake myself and be like, just tell the truth. Like, don't act like you have to cover for him all the time. Ugh, it makes me so mad. And then it circles back to me saying, I'm kind of like a mini hostess at the party. Like, my job is to be there and greet everybody, which that is 100% true. Like, that was my job at the party. I'm in no way, shape, or form just doing my thing. Right. Oh, I just want to go back and slap myself. <laughs> and then you say, too, that when celebrities come up, you're scared to talk to them. That's more Kendra's thing. Yeah, well, I'm I'm scared to talk to anybody. I'm very, very interested introverted but also like my celebrity worship kind of like went out the window after I moved into the mansion like when I first moved to LA at 19 I was just like any other starstruck girl from the middle of nowhere like anytime I ran into a celebrity I thought it would be so cool to like call back home and be like oh my god I saw so-and-so or get a picture with so-and-so like I was just as starstruck as anybody else and of course was starstruck with Hef as well but after I moved into the mansion I think I just saw so much with like the other girls girlfriends and a lot of the other people that were around just laying down for any celebrity that came along like wanted to every celebrity they saw which if you want to do that like by all means like get your shit but it was just a lot and it was and I just saw so many people get like run through and like I had like my own experiences I didn't love at the mansion and I just got really turned off on celebrity worship yeah I feel like I saw it from so many of the other girls too that I thought that's very unpleasant to watch and it has to be unpleasant or maybe the celebrities enjoy it but I didn't like seeing it and I thought I do not want to be like that it was like a mirroring thing because I was very like slobby and starstruck too when I first came to LA but then sometimes you see things about yourself mirrored back to you and it looks disgusting from the outside so you're like I kind of want to change that You know what I mean? I don't know. It just, I got disgusted. And I'm not trying to say it in like a judgy way on everybody else. Like, again, like I was that starstruck girl too. And maybe I was like disgusted with myself, but it was just, I don't know. I was grossed out by it. It left a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah, I can see that. I love Patty and Ray dancing. Yeah. And then in commentary, it says that Stacy was firing Donald Trump all night. Right. Because this was at the height of like The Apprentice and when he was known for, you're fired. Right. Which is so weird after everything that's happened in our country up to today to think that there was a point in time where Donald Trump's big thing he was known for was, you're fired. Right. Do people even remember that? I don't know. <laughs> but I guess Stacy was all through the night going up to him going, you're fired. You're fired. <laughs> So and I live with that was, visual. I bet she was annoying the crap out of him. I know. <laughs> no offense to Stacey, but I know like if she said she was doing it all night, she was she probably was doing it repeat. all night. Yeah, so funny. And then when they show Patty dancing with Ray Anthony, they give Ray Anthony a lower third and it said Ray Anthony famous band leader and I remember like making fun of that to Kevin I'm like oh so famous you have to tell us and that made Kevin just die laughing like the belly laugh (laughs) and then Kevin like we love Ray he was always like the nicest man but I remember years later Kevin told me this story about how he was talking to somebody who used to work for Ray back in the day like a musician that was in his orchestra and he was complaining saying that Ray was so cheap (laughs) Oh. And, that, and that they would always resented him because allegedly he was so cheap. I don't know if he really was, but supposedly. And that when they would take, they would all say, I'm going to go take a Ray Anthony. Oh my God. <laughs> Did I tell you that Ray Anthony tried calling me? This was like a few years ago now. Was he live on Facebook? No, (laughs) because Ray Anthony was on Facebook a few years ago and he went live and he didn't realize he was live. I don't know how I even caught this. It must have like been recorded and been up there and somebody told me about it because I'm never on Facebook. But he was like picking his nose in front of the camera and didn't realize and doing all this stuff. And he was trying to call the mansion. This was back when Hef was still alive. And he's like, 
get me the Playboy Mansion on the phone. And then the phone rings in the background by his bed and he gets up to go answer the phone. And he has like a 70s swinger bedroom, by the way. And he answers the phone and it's Stephanie Heinrich, a playmate, calling him going, Ray, you're on Facebook Live. He's like, what? I'm on what? Like has no clue what's going on. She's like, you're on Facebook Live. You're live right now. People are watching you. He goes, I don't care. More publicity. (laughs) Oh my God. Well, a few years ago, he tried calling me. And so I tried to call him back and I said, Ray, hi, it's Bridget. And he said, hello. And I said, it's Bridget. And he said, it's, he said, Belinda or something (laughs) like that. And I was like, Bridget. And he's like, I can't hear you. And I said, (laughs) it's Bridget from the mansion. And he's like, I can't hear her. And he hands his phone to his son, who is not that much younger than him. Yeah. <laughs> and he gets on the phone. He's like, hello? And I was like, hi, it's Bridget from the mansion. I was told Ray was trying to, like, Ray called and left a message for me. And he was like, I can't hear you. Oh, this no. is the son now. And I said, it's Bridget. Bridget. <laughs> from Girls Next Door from Playboy. And he's like, oh. <laughs> And then he tells Ray, it's cousin Brenda. Shut the f*** up. And and Ray says, oh, cousin Brenda? That's, and he obviously sounds weirded out by that. Your alter ego name is now cousin Brenda. (laughs) And he gets back on the phone. He goes, Brenda? And I'm like, no, Bridget. He's like, Brenda, how you doing? And I was like, click. Oh my God, that, that was is my, so funny. That was my big trying to reconnect with Ray Anthony and see he what he wanted. He could be a reality show. <laughs> and when Patty and Ray are dancing, there's a lot of like fake voiceover. They're plugging in of Kendra's voice. Like, I'm going to whip you or something like that, right? Yeah, there's some weird stuff going yeah. on. Um, and then Kendra says she wants her mom to have fun and enjoy her life, but she can't see her settling down with all the way Ray. No, <laughs> that would have been a cute couple though, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> they would have been funny. And then they cut to my confessional and I'm listing off all the celebrities. And as I'm watching this, my first reaction was, because, you know, they love to like stereotype us into our little characters. I'm like, this isn't on brand. They should have Kendra listing off the celebrities. Like I just said, I don't talk to celebrities. That's Kendra's thing. But then I realized they are keeping it, quote unquote, on brand. Because I'm listing off the celebrities. I'm talking about Donald and Ivanka Trump. And then they cut to Kendra listing off the athletes. And then I say Paris Hilton. They give her the athletes and they give me the rich people. Oh. So like I'm just gold digging on all kinds of levels I over see. here. So they're they're keeping it on brand. Then Kendra goes on the dance floor and gives her mom a dirty look and says, "You listen to me when I talk to you," which I was like, <laughs> "We're going with this whole Kendra's the boss now <laughs> yeah. type thing," which went with her outfit. It did. It did. And did you notice we have a giant punch bowl on our table? Yeah, because that's Kendra and her jungle juice. Oh, I'd forgotten that was even a thing. Well, it comes back to haunt me in another party. What do you mean? Well, I feel like I should save it for that party, maybe. I want to know now. Oh. People will forget by the time we get to the party. So. Five years from now. She was all about having this big bowl of what they call jungle juice. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't even know what's all in it. It's fruit juices and different alcohols and stuff in a big punch bowl on the table. And there's a ladle in it. And you, you know. Pour, pour yourself a drink with it. People put it in jugs now, so they have their own thing. Because I was going to say punch bowls seem so unsanitary. Yeah. Like, think of all the people leaning over to say hi to Hef that are, like, breathing and coughing and spilling over that thing. <laughs> but anyway, so it's all, well, it gets worse than that. She takes the ladle and is drinking right out of it and later makes me do it, too. So we're drinking right from the ladle and sticking it back in the punch bowl. How little house on the prairie of you. <laughs> Well, so, but um, that's what it is. But later on at another party, it's a Midsummer Night stream party. Uh I have this custom made corset done and not at like trashy. I have it done at this like amazing, like couture corset place out of San Francisco. I go to San Francisco for a fitting. Yeah, Dark Garden. And so I have this amazing corset made and um, which are not cheap and it's like actual like a silk fabric Mm -hmm. on the outside and Kendra like at one point this is this is not this party you guys this is a midsummer night dream party in the future she gets up on the table and she picks up the entire (gasps) juice bowl and and she's just like being crazy and out of control and she starts she lifts up the whole punch bowl and starts drinking it and it's spilling out everywhere and it splashes pink pinkish red 
jungle juice all over my dark garden corset. And I was so pissed at her. And she was like telling me to fuck off and too bad. And I need, and it's a she party. Off? I think so. Oh my God. Was she not drenched? She didn't care. It was everywhere, like Ew, sticky juice nasty. all over the place. And she thought I was being a bitch for it. Damn. So that's my jungle juice story. I feel so bad if I did that to somebody. I'd be like, at the, me too. But um, at this party, it's not a problem. The punch is not a problem. <laughs> and I do, I do see her in the video here drinking out of the ladle. And I do know that she made me drink out of the ladle because... I don't see it in the video, but I have a photo of me doing it oh, later after I did the strip tease. I think I wasn't really drinking until after I was done with the strip tease. I might have been pretend sipping on a drink, but I wasn't like getting drunk or anything until after that strip tease was over because I needed to be like fully know what I was doing. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So we need to explain the Paris Hilton birthday song. Right? Because this is not cut right. Okay, so what happened is it's Hef's 80th birthday and they would always have, obviously, Hef's personal videographer was, you know, taking video. But they would also, at these parties, have like little stations for Playboy.com content. Right. Like they'd have a little area set up. In this case, it was set up way over on the far end of the grotto, like where Hef would play backgammon during Fun in the Sun. I say that like everybody knows exactly. But it's all the way on the other side of the pool because they need it to be a little bit more quiet. Not like it's quiet over there, but they need it to be a little bit away from the sound system so mm -hmm. they can hear what people are saying. And just kind of like its own little enclave so that people who want to go get film for Playboy.com, like that's their choice. It's not really cutting into like the privacy of the party. Right. But this is across the lawn from where we are. Like if you look at the backyard, like it's literal the opposite side of the yard. So Paris goes over there and they're asking people, you know, to get in front of this couch and grab the microphone and like, oh, do you have any birthday wishes for Hef? Because they want to put together like this big happy birthday compilation. So she goes over and sings like a Marilyn Monroe happy birthday. And at this time, like Paris is like the biggest star in the world. So this is going to go viral. But we had no idea this was happening at the time. Like right. we're completely over on the other end of the side of the party. We have no idea. We don't even see this or know she did it until like the next morning when Hef gets like the highlight reel. Right. And it gets sent out to the news and it goes everywhere. But the way they cut it on the show is it makes it look like she's in front of our table singing to Hef and we're like standing up and applauding. And one of the reasons I wanted to point this out is somebody was posting, posted this clip on TikTok a long time ago and I went to go comment on it. And I saw in the comments, somebody was writing, oh my God, Holly looks so jealous right now. Which if you look <laughs> at the footage, I don't think I look jealous, but we weren't. We didn't even see Paris do that. Like right. what we're standing up and applauding for, I think is three, six mafia. Probably. That's my best guess. So if I'm jealous of anybody, I guess it's Juicy J. <laughs> I mean. Well, who isn't jealous of Juicy J? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Which leads me to the next thing. Kendra's talking to Three Six Mafia. She said she's a ghetto fab girl. And what does that even mean? I don't know, but I'm just I saying. Was like, okay. I and then I say we had fun with Three Six Mafia at Ed Hardy. Were we hanging out with Three Six Mafia at Ed Hardy? Well, this <laughs> was back like, when Ed Hardy was like an up and coming thing. brand, and their thing was they would give so much swag yeah. to people, like celebrities, anybody who was on the radar. And we were invited to their store on Melrose and they would just load us up with so much stuff. Yeah. And I think it was just one of those days where they had like celebrities come get stuff. I don't have a clear memory of it because those days were kind of hectic. Like it would be a lot of like just loading up all the crowded yeah. and hectic. Right. So when Kendra's saying she's an old 3-6 Mafia fan, that kind of made me laugh because like how long have 3-6 Mafia even been around? I have no idea. But it reminded me of this story. So back in the day, there was a girlfriend there who had like a 10, 11 year old son who was like at the house a lot. And he was in the pantry talking to one of the butlers and they were talking about music. And this was probably like 2002, 2003. So like Lincoln Park had been around for like a couple years. And they're talking about Lincoln Park. And the kid goes, really? I'm an old Lincoln Park fan. <laughs> I thought it was the cutest thing because like Lincoln Park had been around for maybe like a couple of years and this kid is like 11 and he's like fronting on this butler like well I'm OG I'm an old Lincoln Park <laughs> fan and I just thought that was the cutest thing and I I never forget it and it's just one of those things that like plays on repeat in my head like yeah <laughs> 
So the next scene is Kendra introducing Three Six Mafia, and they start they start rapping. And Kendra stays up there with them. And you you turn to Hef and say, Kendra knows all the words. And she's like very into it, of course. And she's on the stage by herself at first. And then a lot of the painted ladies mm-hmm. start coming up. And a lot of the other girls and stuff, which is totally normal at the party. Uh-huh. Like the painted ladies, specifically the painted ladies, are told to go get up on the stage and like yeah. dance and do the go-go type thing and stuff like that. And then when Kendra is like rapping to Hef... They cut to me like what Kendra says something like, oh, this is our song. Ha ha ha. They do a cut to me. I'm looking behind me and I'm like just have like a normal look on my face and they make it look like I'm like jealous and pissed. But I can guarantee like I always thought the slob on my knob thing was funny and cute. I still think it's funny. Like I'm not pissed about that. I guarantee you. And I'm so sick of them always like cutting me to make me look jealous. Right. Was I ever annoyed with Kendra? Absolutely. But not then not during this part not even during this time period and I just think it sucks of the show so when all these women are on stage dancing and I say it looks like a rap video I'm watching this back and it is just like an anvil on my head how there is zero diversity at these parties everybody on stage is white every single girl crazy and obviously I always knew that that there could always have stood to be a lot more diversity and representation and that was one of the things that Hef and I were trying to do when I worked at the studio and stuff too but you really see it here that's interesting especially when I'm saying oh it looked just like a rap video meaning there's like a lot of sexy girls and that was like a lot of rap videos back then would have a lot of sexy women but I'm like holy every girl on stage is white Hmm. it's crazy it is crazy And we kind of will be talking about that in an upcoming Patreon episode too because the Secrets of Playboy episode 8 is kind of about representation and like different different standards for beauty. Yeah, for sure. I'm excited to get into that. And I see Gerardo in the background working security. If you guys listen to our deleted scenes episode last season, there's this really sweet scene where one of the security guys comes back from the military and like his family works at the mansion. It's a really sweet reunion scene. So he's back there. And you know who I noticed up on the stage dancing, one of the painted ladies, was a woman named Jasmine Fior who was very tragically killed a few years later. And we covered her story on the Playboy murders and when we were doing the research and covering the story I was like where do I know her from because she looked so familiar to me she reminds me she has a very distinct look she reminds me a lot of our friend Ashley and I think she looks like Tinkerbell a Mm -hmm. little bit yeah so I'm like where do I know her from like was she a bunny at the Playboy Club like obviously I knew from the research she had a Playboy connection she was one of the girls of golf and she went to the fun in the sun like after we left like Stacy knew her really well but I was trying to figure out like where have I seen her before did she test for playmate I don't think she did but it was because she was a painted lady because yeah. I see her on stage so I'm like oh that's a trip and I went through and watched some of the video footage like the mm-hmm. raw video footage I have from Hef's um videographer that walked uh-huh. around and she's in a lot of the footage and wow so that's where I know her from yeah crazy and she was definitely hanging out our table and everything oh wow so Um, now it's your turn oh my god (laughs) so yeah it cuts to me an interview and I say we're sitting there watching three six mafia and I was really nervous because I knew my new turn was coming I basically told Hef that I had to go to the bathroom Mm -hmm. and instead I of course go backstage and I jump in the cake for them to roll me out I thought it was very rushed on the show which I get it like Jen said the producer we had a few episodes ago you only have 22 minutes or in this case it was a double episode but still you don't have a lot of time to fit everything in but as a viewer I kind of have questions like where was the cake was it like right outside the tent where did you have to go how do you load into this thing like I felt like that could have been included and they could have made it look really suspenseful I agree I agree but they just did not want to spend much time on this at all like they gave me the dance but like other than that they really didn't care about the process of it at all and there was a lot of meat to it. Like, a hundred percent. Definitely could have been very suspenseful because I know my nerves. I mean, even just talking about it, I feel my nerves escalating. Like, I feel yeah. that I, fe- I can put myself back in that same exact spot that I was. But the, po- the cake was parked um, down over by the stream. There's like mm-hmm. a, a creek, like a stream going through the backyard, and it's right outside the tent. And funny thing, so like to get into it, we have to take the top off. And I already had the tissue paper taped on there. So I had to be very careful not to disturb that. 
then I get inside, they have to put the top back on, and then they wheeled me out a little bit, not so, so that it wasn't on stage or in the tent yet, but it was like wheeled a little bit, but it's a hill that goes down to the stream. Oh no. And my eye was inside it, and I rolled backwards. Stop it right into now. The, not all the way into the stream, but up against the rocks that go up to the stream, and they were like, whoa, 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 Fuck. and they had to run and grab the cake before I went into the stream. Oh my and God. And then I'm in there waiting, and then they pull me out, they push me out and onto the stage and they like push everybody off. I don't know if you can see, but all the butlers and security are all standing around with their arms out so that the videographers can and the show can get the footage. And so Hef can see without everybody like, Mm -hmm. you know, coming in. Plus I need to get off the cake and walk around the cake and all that kind of stuff. So I need a certain amount clear. So I'm on the dance floor and Brian, the cue was Brian Alea was going to knock when I was in position and Mm -hmm. ready. So he gave me the knock that I'm in position. But the thing is three, six mafia kept singing in the mics, like chanting and, and singing happy birthday and stuff. And I could not hear the music in there. That would have thrown me so far off. Like you did so well. I don't know what I would have done. It reminds me when I was in my show in Vegas, there was this singing number I did and there was this runway in the middle of the stage. And when I hit like the hardest note, it was at the very end of the runway. And there was something with the way the speakers were in the theater that when I stood right there, I couldn't hear myself. And it was so stressful because it's like the note that I'm the most self-conscious of. And all of a sudden that's the one note you can't hear. And I just don't know what I would have done if I were you. I mean, I guess you have no choice but to get out there and just do your routine. And if you're off beat, you're off beat. Yep. But f- so I didn't know, like, I'm just like, I can't hear it. I can't hear it. I can't hear it. And I'm like, I just have to pop. And yeah. if, it's, if it hasn't started yet, I'll just like pose and be all cute and blow kisses or whatever until it has. And if it's already started, I'll just try and hurry up and catch up. I mean, the good news is we were hearing the same thing you were hearing. So it didn't seem off to us. Like we could hear there was burlesque music happening and it seemed like it was all going with the flow. Yeah. And it was funny because Hef, was so confused he thought you were Pamela Anderson when you popped out and I think one that's because you had the big hair and Pamela was doing a lot of the big hair back then yeah but also she kind of did was known for doing stuff like that like not burlesque per se but you'll see in a later season she like walks out with a cake naked for Hef's birthday like she was Mm -hmm. always doing those kind of funny things but then when he realized it was you it got like the big laugh like he was so surprised he did not and when I say the big laugh he wasn't for you guys who don't know, he wasn't laughing at her. It was like, he did that when he was like really happy and like surprised with something. Like it was a good reaction. Yeah. But wasn't he also kind of pissed at first and looking for me saying, I'm missing it. Like when they rolled the cake out, I thought, I remember you telling me at the time that he was getting pissed. He was like, where did Bridgie go? Where did Bridgie go? And like, and getting mad that I was gone too long in the bathroom. Probably. And it was probably one of those things where I'm like, oh, it's fine. Yeah. You're like, she'll be right back. It's fine. It's fine. Just look, look at the cake. (laughs) Yeah, but good thing you didn't try and stop things until I got back. So at first, so I pop and I try to just focus on Hef because I'm looking around and there are just, there's literally 1,000 people watching and they're like pushing and getting closer and and the stage is packed behind me and they're chanting. I'm trying to just concentrate on what I can hear of the music, which is very little, Mm -hmm. and Hef. Like just that, make that my eyeline and my everything. You know what? I'm surprised we didn't do more things like this moving forward. Like I know, and you'll see it in a later season, there's a 4th of July party where you do a trapeze performance. But I'm surprised we weren't orchestrating things like that for just parties moving forward. Girl, I feel like I was always trying to do stuff like this the entire time. Like I feel like I was always pushing like little things. I do remember you had those ideas like back in the Mean Girls days, but I never wanted to do them back then because can you imagine the hate we would have got oh, from the mean girls so doing bad any kind of like performance or something like that forget it I did one when the mean girls era remember I came out um and did Santa baby for half in the dining room that was really cute and it was also during a buff were they even there though well it was during, it was during a buffet a so dinner. probably not yeah so probably <laughs> they probably weren't there But I remember there was this Spike TV party. For those who don't know, there was a cable channel called Spike and it was like a men's network. And they had a party in the backyard with the Pussycat Dolls. Back before they were a singing group, they were a burlesque troupe and they had very distinct costumes. And we loved the Pussycat Dolls. So we decided we were all going to dress up as Pussycat Dolls. But what's weird is the Mean Girls actually went along with it. which is Oh, because I think they thought they should be Pussycat Dolls. They were so into it. 
Yeah, so I'm surprised they went along with it. But I do remember one of them was like mumbling about how embarrassing this is and they can't believe we're doing this. Oh, well, of course. <laughs> of course there's that. But I think that they were really into it and thought no, that they Carmen should No, Carmen Electra be. came up to us and was like, oh my God, it's so flattering. You guys look so cute. Thanks for dressing up. I'm like, put us in, her sh- in your show. I know. <laughs> And then it comes down to taking the bra off. And in burlesque, you really tease everything. You tease the glove coming off. You tease a, you know, a garter strap coming off. You tease that bra coming off. And it takes a little while to take it off Mm -hmm. because you really want the audience rooting for you to take it off. And then Holly starts screaming, take it off. Yeah. (laughs) And Three Six Mafia starts chanting, take it off. And then um, I'm done. And I did the strip tease. And it actually turned out perfect somehow. I popped Right on cue, but it is an absolute just like one of those serendipitous kind of things because I could not hear anything. For those of you who want to see what the actual strip tease look like in full and hear the actual music, I did um, record it and put it on Patreon. Oh, good. So I found it. Yeah. So there's a thing for the actual music and it's just the music. And then there's the, um, the actual routine. So you guys can see it. Awesome. And then the real cake comes pushing out and Lori's pushing yeah, it. Yeah, you can see if you ever wondered who Lori the pastry chef is who we talk about. She's pushing the cake out. Yeah. Oh, and then we sing happy birthday. And this is the third time I think we're singing happy yeah, birthday. And, and I know we've mentioned this before that typically, like with Kendra's birthday episode, we couldn't sing happy birthday because back then it was not in the public domain. So you had to pay out a ton of money. So we were never allowed to do it. And I think they let it slip this time because Paris did it and that was such a viral moment that they didn't want to not include that so they finally let us sing happy birthday yeah and we're doing like lots of photos and stuff and I know Donald Trump came over and said that that was incredible and I said oh um so does that mean that I'm hired and he said oh you're definitely hired (laughs) and just so you guys know for people who are going to take this all politically this was way before any political career oh yeah like I had no idea if he even had any political opinions back then or what they were. Same. Like, I remember back then, if people would ask me in interviews, oh, who's the nicest celebrity you met at the mansion? You not. I said the Trumps. Oh, really? And that, yeah. And that's not like, I, I'm telling you guys this as an isolated story in time back then. I don't you know, agree with all the politics and I'm not alluding, I'm not, I'm not trying to connect me thinking they were nice back then to any political endorsement now at all in any way. But I thought they were really nice back then and to us. And, and again, when I say they're nice, I'm not trying to take down anybody's stories who's like had a bad story about him. Like I'm not, because people can be kind and cordial. Like two things can be true at once. Like people can be like, polite and nice to some people and maybe not to others you know but so I'm just telling the story as a very isolated moment in time and it's not supposed to reflect on anything political or anybody else's experience yeah and the reason they were there is because they were shooting an episode of The Apprentice at the same time Remember they were there? Yeah, at the mansion. Yeah, they did that one with a bunch of playmates. Yeah, and so um, they stuck around for Hef's birthday. And I think that it was even like they we weren't sure if they were going to stick around for it. So we were excited that they Mm -hmm. were that they did stay for it. But yeah, Donald Trump told me I was hired and this has nothing to do with no matter which way you lean politically. It's all before that. You're not going to be working in the White House cabinet. I am not. <laughs> and um, and then we all take a picture together and we are pushing for Ivanka to come in and take a picture with us because she's trying to be like, you know, oh no, just you guys, just you guys. And we're like, no, come in for the picture. And I think they show that in the video. Yeah. And so. you have to understand when people like celebrities or like hoity-toity people were polite to us, it felt good because not everybody was. Like I've right. said that before, how there were other celebrities that just turned their noses up, would like sneer in our faces would not say hi would act like we're not there like hef's okay but us no (laughs) right right so we sing happy but we take pictures with different celebrities and then we um the we sing happy birthday again kendra says it was like the perfect birthday it was the best weekend ever and this is overcut with us singing happy birthday and stuff and the cake and holly um said that uh, you say, Holly says that Hef told her that his 80th birthday was the best birthday he has ever had. And so it was really cool to be a part of that because he's had so many great parties. And I think that's pretty incredible too. That 
he would say that and that we got to be a part of it. I think so too. And it's funny because what I'm saying is like, oh my God, this is such a great year. I'm looking forward for what's coming up. Basically, it sounds like the typical season wrap ups that they would always get us to say like last season when they thought the season was ending at Midsummer Night's Dream and then later when the season actually ended. I'm like, why are they giving me a season wrap up line again? But I think it's supposed to tease like, oh my God, this season and this year is going to be so good. Yeah, for sure. And they end with the photo of the four of us. Very cute. Yeah. You know what? I forgot to write down my favorite and least favorite. Oh, me too. (laughs) Well, I think I know my favorite. Yeah, popping out of the cake. Popping out of the cake for sure. You guys, I would do that again with enough rehearsal time tomorrow if I could. I I loved it that much. Like somebody hired me to do burlesque somewhere. (laughs) Yeah. That's how much I loved it. And watching it all over again, I'm like, oh, I'm just so into it. Like I, I want, and you know what else I remember too? Wearing a corset and doing all those dance moves made my stomach so flat that I'm like, wait, that's the key I'm missing. I need to like wear a corset. Yeah, I know your body looks amazing. I'm like that, but I remember thinking that it had something to do with that corset. Yeah. My favorite, I think, is just the visuals of this episode. I just think everything from, like, the cake and your outfit, my peacock outfit, you know, the cake that you pop out of and all the things. It was a very visual episode, and I think that's my favorite part. Yeah. What about least favorite? Wait, before you move on from that, I want to say, too, about your peacock costume is that I later um, asked your permission to knock it off for my Halloween costume line. Oh, yeah. And it was a huge seller. And I also asked Hef's permission to knock off the version of his outfit that I made Mm -hmm. for his 2004 birthday party, like the the cropped smoking jacket and little things. So those were all part of the Halloween costume line that I would do years later. Um, And then also, I thought I'd give you guys an update on the cake too for the longest time it was sitting in my storage unit like what am I supposed to do with this cake it's I can't describe to you guys how huge this cake is yeah um it's probably five feet tall and probably I don't I don't even know I don't even know the diameter anymore um eight feet maybe or something Mm -hmm. it's massive it doesn't fit through any standard door or anything And um, so it was in a storage unit for the longest time. And finally, I was just like, this is taking up so much room. Like, I have to find a home for this. And I asked Catherine Delish, who helped choreograph my whole... um, Oh, that's the other thing I should add, too. Catherine Delish was there watching because she, you know, choreographed the whole thing. Yeah. Did the outfit, like everything for me. And she was there and um, she sent me an email that I found in my scrapbooks afterwards, like just totally praising how well she thought everything did but like I just need to give her another shout out how amazing she was and how like awesome but anyway I called her to see if her or Dita because she also worked with works with Dita regularly wanted the cake and they did not want it and so um I was like I don't know what to do with this cake I was having lunch with Holly Mm -hmm. one day and I was like I don't know what to do with this cake like it means so much to me and I wanted to go to a good home but I just feel like I can't you know, hold on to it any longer. I don't know if I should just try selling it on eBay or if I should sell it to a prop house. What I really want to do is give it to somebody who will like use it for burlesque. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, oh, what about my, I have this friend who does burlesque, Mosh. Yeah. And she adopted the cake. Yeah. And she did a post about it on her Instagram. I'm going to scroll through and find it and I'll repost it on our Girls Next Level Instagram if you want to see where the cake went. She had a very nice post about it. And she had an artist friend of hers named Scott Hove kind of like redecorate the yes. cake and if you don't know he does art installations there's like one in downtown LA he does like sculptures there's a bathroom stall at the Palms that he did and he makes things look like cake frosting basically so he like kind of redid the cake it's incredible yeah. I want to use it again now like I want to borrow so it back because yeah. it's like totally different now it's like hot pink with white frosting and it's so cute it is I'll scroll down on her Instagram and I'll repost it on the girls next level Instagram so you guys can see yeah she did an amazing job and I'm so happy because I just feel like the 
the the cake went to the perfect home. But it was funny. She came to my storage unit with this with these guys with this big mm-hmm. ass truck, and we like did this whole loading up scene. <laughs> and I did a video like bye bye cake. I was actually kind Aww. of like sad and like broken hearted a little bit to see it yeah. go. But I know it went to a good home, and the way it looks now is incredible. And yeah, I'm so happy with it all. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, worst things. I know we're ending on such a positive note. I'm like, oh, we have to go back and get the worst. What is my worst let me look through yeah I don't even know what my worst is either you know what I think my worst is just how the show tried to portray Kendra's gift is not good enough and I know we've been talking about that for two seasons but it was never an issue at the time it was purely the show trying to make her seem like the new one the one who you know didn't put as much thought into things the Mm -hmm. one who was just you know didn't measure up somehow like to get the audience to feel really bad and everything and it was never the case at the time yeah I just feel like it's they don't have a good plot line for her in this episode and they're really trying to force something because we're back it's the first episode of season two and they have to like give her a presence but I feel like it just kind of naturally fluctuates over the episodes like there's going to be episodes where you don't have as much to do or where I don't have as much to do and that's fine right So I agree on that. I think my least favorite thing that really makes me cringe when I watch this is just like the lack of diversity. Every girl at that party is white, basically. I'm just like, whoa. Like it really like hit me. I can see that. And I do feel like Playboy sort of tried. They tried, but in a very like tokeny way. Like when you look back at like pop culture history and what was really in the mainstream media, which, which has always been, you know, very like, white person dominated it's like people would really think they were doing something if like oh we have using playboy as an example a black playmate this year yeah and it's just not representative of like what the actual population of america is i mean i will say that like when i was working at the studio hef was very wanting to push forward with including more diversity and we were we didn't make any like huge sweeping changes within the two years that I was there but he was very open to that like we would have had to do more aggressive like reaching out to modeling agencies which that was never Playboy's game with Playmates period at least when I was there but it just goes back to showing why representation is important is I think it doesn't even occur to people that they could be a candidate for something if they're not seeing other people like them represented. You know what I mean? Like we're growing up white girls thinking, oh, here's this beautiful blonde woman in Playboy with just a little bit of hair and makeup. I could be that girl, but it might not occur to a woman of color. Like I can do, oh, they wouldn't pick me. You know what I mean? That's what I was just going to say. They're yeah. not submitting because they think that's not what they're looking for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think that's my least favorite thing is just, I mean, it's a, it's truthfully what was going on at the time, but it's very cringy to look back and watch and be like, oh my God, even like the list of like what women were on the parties, it was like 99.9% white. It's crazy. Yeah. It was so funny when I was going back and watching the footage of of the, the like the raw footage from the party. Uh-huh. Like all the things that you noticed. Like I was watching, I was three minutes in and I think I gave you like 15 voice notes of like everything that was going yes. on. Yes, the, the party footage was always so much fun to watch after the fact. It's still so many, fun. I know. It's like, funny. I don't know if it would be later? funny to everybody else because they don't know all the people involved, but. I think they would get a kick out of it. Yeah. I think they would. It's I don't so know. Funny. Yeah, it's it's fascinating. All the little things that you just see in the background going on mm-hmm. and the people that you see. And yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. I was scanning through all of it trying to find the actual strip tease. Mm-hmm. Was the whole strip tease on the party footage? Yeah. Oh, good. So you got it all. Yeah. So the next episode we get into after this is career dazed, right? Yes. I feel like that was one that I loved at the time, but like I hate now. So that'll be a fun one to get into. Oh, yeah. Because I'm just, I just started watching it. And you do say, this is one of my favorite episodes ever. Yeah, because back then I felt like, oh my God, they're actually showing us doing stuff. Ooh, career woman. But now I look back on it and I'm like, we weren't actually doing, other than like the jewelry line thing, the stuff we were doing wasn't career. Right. They show me doing um, hosting a little bit, but they try and make it look like I'm messing up. I mean, we'll get into all of that. They show me doing hosting a little bit. And then the rest of it, I'm like, wait, that's not career. That's not career. That's not career. Infantilization nation. 
So yeah, <laughs> it'll be interesting to get into. Yeah. So we will check back with you guys next week. If you would like more content, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash girls next level. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye guys. Bye.